the first time I came to Senate, I was still driving my small KBS. It was a KBS right. Toyota IST. Right. Tiny. And f- colleague senators were like, Asige, you're going to have to upgrade. I live way below, way be- below my means. Way, way, way. I think my monthly sort of expenditure is including rent. Yeah. It's like 50K. Wow. Welcome back to Financially Incorrect. I am your host, Barack. Um, remember, this is a place where we have a cheeky take on serious financial topics. Um, this month has been an autism awareness month, the month of April. So I will keep talking about it. I'll keep mentioning it. So, um, of course, I talked about it in, you know, in, in Jeff's episode. I'm personally affected. Well, or rather, live, live. I have a nephew who's autistic and, and I've had to look at <clears throat> my brother sort of changing his life a little bit just to make sure that he's able to give him the best care. So I just keep saying for this month, anybody who is taking care of anybody with autism, anyone who's a caregiver or a parent, shout out to you. And if you know anyone, please do give them, give them a, a hug, give them support, buy them coffee. It's not easy. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it for Autism Awareness Month. Remember, this podcast is proudly sponsored by FX Pressa. And remember, if you'd like to open a, a demo account or a live account, you can check out the links in the description box. If you'd like to learn more physically um, or, rather, or be educated physically on um, um, the trading, online trading, you can go to any of their locations in Akuru, Eldoret, Thika, Kitengela, or in Kampala if you're in Uganda. And FX Pesa are the beautiful people who allow us to be able to have financially incorrect. So please do check them out. Today, I have a very, very special guest with me. Um, she wears many hats, um, as I was told, very, very many hats, but I'm going to introduce her as a nominated senator, Crystal Asige. Welcome to Financially Incorrect. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I didn't know that um, you had uh, such a close relationship to autism. Yes, 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 I do, actually. Um, mm. Do you know anyone who's autistic? Um, many people. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah? by virtue of being oh, in the disabled right, community right, right, and right. being a leader in, yeah, but yeah. not in my immediate family. Yeah. Yeah. What Should I tell you... Um, an interesting juncture between finance and autism. Please do. Apparently, yeah. according to my research and, and all of the, the work I've done in, uh, in, in disability in general, right. men who have very technical careers like finance, engineering, accounting, mm-hmm. things that are very analytical in nature, yeah. are more prone to be fathers of an autistic child. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And also... Um, Silicon Valley in California yeah. has 10 times more prevalency of, of people on the autism spectrum than any other part of the states because <laughs> yeah. of the nature of work that's there. Yeah. Innovation, math, tech, very an- analytical. Yeah. Very, um, uh, you know. What's the correlation between the analytical element and birthing or, you know, siring an autistic that's the part that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think you would need to have a doctor here to explain it better. Yeah. But um, it's something about the genome that um, belongs to a person who is very analytical and thinking right. and spends years and, and decades in that kind of field or sector. Right. Um, in their genome, there is something that they pass along to their, to their children. Yeah. And um, boys are four times more likely to be autistic than girls. I also did not know that. I'm, I'm just, I'm just out here. Yeah, <laughs> I also did not know that. I mean, yeah. yeah so I have my 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 nephew. He was diagnosed at, I believe, he was two, mm-hmm. so relatively young. Initially, um, nonverbal, but now he's talking a lot more. That's great. Um, it's expressing himself a lot better. He can he can be in. Initially, he 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 struggled being in loud, you know, environments yeah, and around a lot do, of yeah. people. Yeah. But yeah. these days, I mean, he's a lot. He's at the family functions. He's at the trips. Um, he loves swimming. Mm. Um, very smart, mm. very sharp, yep. very very sharp. I mean, he he'll play with the numbers and the letters and everything in school. Very sharp, you know, very cool. So I guess we're trying to do everything that we can to try and ensure that he has the best possible life that he can. Of course, yeah. And, and it's good yeah. that it's really good that um, you guys had the opportunity to to find it or diagnose it early. Yeah. Because early yeah. intervention really is the key to how yeah. that child will then grow up and be able to function with their disability. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So two years old is actually zero to two um, is Best the time, time they to, say, yeah, yeah to, to may- make sure that you get tested if you see the signs of, you know, your child yeah. maybe displaying these types of traits. 
Yeah. It's best to to get as as uh, get it as early as possible. As, yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely not easy. I mean, I watch my my twin brother when when my nephew has an episode mm-hmm. and and it's yeah, it, it's like I I I feel for him and there's nothing you can do, you know. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, it's a little tough. But anyway, um that's it. Um so yes, if you know someone who's who's dealing with autism, just give them a shout out. So let's get into our episode for today, right? Yeah. We're going to find out about your your money journey. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, find out how you got to be how you got to be a senator and, and what you're doing with all your all your money. Yeah. So let's start with I guess I mean I know um, I know you've talked about this so I don't want to like belabor the point about you living up you know living in Mombasa and growing up but what was it like and what was the money environment that you grew up in? So I'm the last born in my family. Yeah. And my family was definitely amongst those who feel or, or or who imparted to us as kids yeah. that money is scarce. Yeah. Like when we used to go to Uchumi when Uchumi was, you know, the, the supermarket that was open, aging me a bit. But yeah. when we used to go to Uchumi, my mom would always say, think about it. Do you really, really need this? Yeah. Even if I was just getting a pack of crisps yeah. or yeah. just a sweet, do you really, really need this? Because, you know, money is tight. So I always grew up with that mentality of like the scarcity mentality. Yeah. And when I get money, I need to really like keep it, harbor it, take care of it, throw it under the pillow, under the bed, under the mattress. And um, that was the, my first in sort of like um, uh, socialization with money. Mm-hmm. And then I grew up, I mean, still the same sort of foundations around money. Mm-hmm. In school, I used to do anything to make sure that I save every penny, um, going around picking up empty soda bottles so I can go to the shop and get the deposit for it, the 10 bob deposit. Right. Uh, even returning plates from the canteen, you'll get five shillings. And mm-hmm. I used to be like, okay, if everyone else is too lazy, I'll take them back for yeah. you, sort yeah. of thing, so that I can save all those monies and go home and put them in my uh, my little kitty. Yeah. Um, so I think... I mean, pros and cons with that, because, of course, you get scared as an adult to make investments, to spend money. You're always second-guessing yourself. Am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right choice with my money? On the flip side, though, it does help in saving. Yeah. It does help you to not, be, to not splurge, yeah. to not overspend. And um, so th- those were sort of like my first lessons in, yeah. in money. So was it that that uh, money doesn't grow on trees comment that you know sort yeah, of yeah <laughs> yeah that was the sentiment yeah. completely <laughs> we That's know they don't grow on trees yeah, but yeah 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 okay so so grew up you grew up in Mombasa and you mentioned to me that you started in Kenyan system school and then yeah. shift over to the British system school I mean there must have been a fee implication to that shift as well right because. The British system schools tend to be a bit more expensive. Yeah, much. So, um, I mean, were you, were, were you, were, was your family rather comfortable then, you know? Um, so, in my family, my dad's a lawyer. My okay. grandfather, the late uh, Adembesa, was also a lawyer. And mm-hmm. my brother is now, as an adult, a lawyer. Mm-hmm. But at the time, they didn't really, I was kind of shielded from that. Um, mm-hmm. My parents never really used to um, let us know that they were struggling with monies. Um, of course, my dad was one of the very first uh, lawyers who was doing well in Mombasa. It was a very mm-hmm. tiny, tiny island. Mm-hmm. So he was doing, you know, well, whatever well was back in, you know, the 90s and the 80s before right. he started his family. So he, we never really were uh, made aware of, okay, we are struggling with this. Whatever we needed, he would usually, you know, get it. He wouldn't, right. he wouldn't say, oh, no. But it's just that um, small things. And my mom was, like I said, takes us here, takes us there. Right. She was always reminding us like, hey, Dad is struggling, but he would never show us that he's struggling. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, so when okay. we went into the British system school, um, like I said, he we never really knew that there was an issue or or that there was a struggle. Mm. However, I started to realize that you know as you continue growing up, and maybe some trips were not affordable to me, um, some sports uh, activities are not affordable for me, things like that. That's when yeah. you sort of okay, so I get it. But overall, we had what we needed. Okay. Mm. All right. So so. How then does the trajectory to, you know, I mean, of course, by the time, because you, you said by the time he's putting you in the British system school, the trajectory is to go to the UK. Yes. Um, but that's not a cheap endeavor either, mm-hmm. right? I mean, so mm-hmm. I, I hear, you know, you saying that, yeah, you know, going for certain trips locally, but, you know, you, you're heading out to, to, the, to Bristol yeah. to, to get your undergrad done. Um, how did you guys, or as far as you're aware, how did you guys foot that bill? Uh, help from friends, Harambe. 
I think the Harambees are right. <laughs> a cornerstone of Kenyan culture, African culture, I right. guess. Yeah. So yeah. he definitely got um, help from friends. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he would not make that known to us, mm-hmm. but he did have help from friends and he was taking loans and he was doing installment plans at, at, at school, university. There was some times in university where I was late to pay my fees mm-hmm. and, you know, I was being sent letters and being told, hey, it's your three months overdue type of thing. But... Um, I would, you know, just work and, and maneuver my way in the HR offices and, and the finance offices. But um, they did absolutely everything they could to put to put me through that education because yeah. I guess they were thinking of ROI. Right, right. Yeah. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. yeah, what are you gonna get? Right. Okay. And and at the in the UK, do you did you feel like you had to work? Um, to be able to... Yes, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I yeah. had three jobs in the UK whilst right. I was studying. Yeah. So that I could not... Uh, so I didn't need to rely on my dad or my mm-hmm. parents to send me pocket money as well as, you know, paying for my school fees. So I was like, okay. I looked at that fee note, like 9,000 pounds it used to be at the time. Yeah. While local uh, students in the UK were paying 1,500 yeah. or 2,000. Yeah. So mine was o- o- over... Two or three times more I expensive. I think now it's like sixteen thousand. I think. Correct, yeah. and that depends on the discipline you're taking. Yeah. Medicine yeah. is even crazier. Yeah. So yeah, um, I had to get three jobs. I was a tutor first for um, maths, English, science mm-hmm. to kids uh, who are in the black and minority ethnic groups. Mm-hmm. So kids who came over with their parents who are nurses or doctors, and mm-hmm. they you know migrated from Africa or mm-hmm. Asia. So I was a tutor to those kids after school activity. And then I was also a bartender mm-hmm. uh, slash waitress. Mm-hmm. And then I was working in an events company as well. Those were my three jobs. And I would, you know, maneuver Were you exceeding juggle. the 20 hours? Uh, oh. or, or those days you didn't right. have the, the, the limits of 20 hours a week as there a student? There were limits, student. but psh, who am I? <laughs> who are we? <laughs> right, right. Okay. So, yeah, I had to. I mean, I had to because yeah. I needed to pay my rent. I needed to go to Tesco's and whatever else yeah. to buy food. There was times yeah. I had so little money, mm-hmm. I would only go to the supermarket and buy cornflakes, like the, the supermarket brand, not yeah, like, yeah, right, not right. Kellogg's. Not, 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 the, not brand, not like the main brand correct. cereal, right. Kel- uh, cornflakes and, and uh, tea bags. And I used to, in the evenings, drink black tea and yeah. dry cornflakes. That's how broke I used to be. Sometimes. So even, even with the cornflakes, like no milk? Just no, no. Like Couldn't dry cornflakes and black tea? And black tea. So because you, the two didn't expire for a very long time. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, ta- and tap water is free right. in the UK. So. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So did your folks just pay the tuition and you are then, I'm going to figure life out? Um, yes. Half and half. They would support me when I needed, you know, a top up. Yeah. But I would definitely be, be focusing on like my own uh, uh, I- income yeah. uh, outside of um, what they were sending me. Right. Yeah. And you said you're there for eight years, right? Yeah, about. H- how many times do you come back? Um, the first time I came back when I, f- I first went in 2007 and it took me like a year and a half to come back the first time because mm-hmm. uh, crazy flights, you know, right, right. so expensive. Prices, yeah. So I remember spending my first winter um, in dorms on my own and then uh, a friend who was on my course, she's uh, Welsh. She, I don't know, she came back to, because she forgot something or, or they were coming back to pick something up from her, from her dorm, which is next to ours. Mm-hmm. And then she found my lights on, me only, the, the only person in the six bedroom dorm. Right. Hey, Crystal, why, why are you still here? I can't, yeah. I did her, her Welsh yeah, accent, right. but why are you still here? I said, oh, I couldn't go home for Christmas. She's like, oh my God, come with us. We'll take you to Wales for our Christmas. You can't right. stay alone. Yeah. And I think that um, she, for the first time, when interacting with me, a, a Kenyan, an African, whatever, seeing that um, how lonely it can actually be yeah. to be an yeah. international student. Yeah. From then on, we were like besties and she always, uh, always took care of me as, as well as her parents. Yeah. Mm. I mean, but that must have been, I mean, did it feel, I mean, not just lonely, but I would assume from a financial perspective, if you're working three jobs, I mean, you know that money is tight. Yeah. Um, um, it, it seems like you don't really have like a, a one-way ticket back home. Correct. Um, that must have been quite challenging to say, the, to say the least. Yeah, challenging. And I hid it a lot from uh, my peers, my classmates. So even with her, you just told her I couldn't go home. You, couldn't, you didn't tell her why you, you couldn't no, go I home. No, I didn't tell her why. I just said that I wasn't able to, to yeah. go home for Christmas and uh, made excuses, na na na, tried to brush over it and she was like no you have to you have to be with someone for christmas you know yeah. so but i would never let it be known to any of my classmates or anything like that on my course in my dorm 
uh, that I was struggling with money yeah. uh, because I didn't want, and I mean, I was already black. I was already a, a girl, yeah. uh, straight from Kenya, not right. even like living in Europe right. in my childhood. And I had uh, a disability that I w was gradually sort of like really affecting right. my life, impacting right. my life every day because it was a gradual decline. Right. And so I was like, I'm not going to add another intersectionality by telling them that I can't afford this, I can't afford that, yeah. can't afford to go to this party, can't afford the dress, you know, fancy dress costumes that, you know, Europeans really love doing fancy dress parties for Halloween and da da yeah. da. Can't do it, man. So, yeah. I mean, I want to ask you, though, but how long do you think it takes for, um, I guess, your group of friends to to know that, though? Because I'm assuming, I mean, even if you're eating, I mean, were you eating your cornflakes and, 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 and black tea, like, in the middle of the night when no one else, like, no one else <laughs> is awake? And you're like, so nobody is going to know that I have a financial issue. And then I'm also wondering, I mean, mm. if you're there for a considerable period in time, I mean, it's only a matter of time. You know, we all have these friends who, you know, the person's not, coming out or, is, mm. or, or we do go out and they're only having a soda and not having a meal. It takes a while and you realize, okay, maybe like there's something, you know, underneath that's going on. I may not ask about it, yeah. but I'll have an idea. So do you also think genuinely mm. they did not know that you had a money, um, a money problem? Genuinely, I think they didn't know. I'm yeah. very good at masking. I, I think we all are as human beings, yeah. especially when we have something that we feel really protective over and vulnerable around, we really want to mask it. Yeah. So no, they didn't know. And, and, Half of it was maybe because, you know, everyone is young. Everyone's just living their own life, you know, where you need your law kind of thing. Yeah. No one has time to sit down and be like, so, Barack, yeah. what's happening in your life, you know? Yeah. So that was part of it. And also, like I said, it was half me and my, and my, and my sort of not wanting to be forthcoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I also find, I don't know if anyone else uh, listening uh, have found the same, but I had more trouble or... Um, didn't get much acceptance from my own Kenyan community who are out out there in Bristol. Mm -hmm. I found it more difficult to latch onto or to group with fellow Kenyans because mm -hmm. I felt like they were more judgmental. So in my money struggles at uni, I was like, mm -mm. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to go to that so Kenyan party. Kenya. <laughs> I'm not going to go to that Kenyan barbecue. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. What you're doing, Kai? Now Okay, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, they're less judgmental. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Maybe in the comments, people will tell us, I get what you know, what their experience is like, and if they found out to be the same. Um, I want to ask a question because you've talked about a little bit, I guess, touched on the, a little bit on the glaucoma. I want to ask from the date you get the when when you're now in the UK when they're giving you the predictive diagnosis of yeah. when they think that you you you'd eventually lose your vision. Do you get any monetary? Do you have a monetary thinking line of saying, okay, um, I have X years to go. Um, I need to be able to, to be able to, um, sorry, to be able to make it financially in my life. Mm. Um, I can use my vision for the next X years to X amount and that would be able to help me at least, you know, you know in, in one way or another. Did you have any sort of thought like that? Actually, no, I wish yeah. I did. My goodness, where were you Barack, back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be my advisor? No, yeah. I didn't because um, I was working. So that means I was paying taxes. Okay. I was um, on their version of KRA. Mm -hmm. And so that meant that you were able to access NHS. NHS, yeah. yeah. And that was free if you were working and you're paying your taxes, etc. So I was covered by NHS whilst I was there with my visa and all that. And then... Also, that included medication. If you have, uh, you have your prescription uh, paper, you go, go to any chemist and you show your, your card, your blah, blah, blah. It's called the NI card, yeah. Yeah, national insurance uh, card. And then they, of course, just give it to you over the counter. Yeah. And so there were no financial sort of strains in that, in that way. Right. And because even though they had predicted that I was going to be blind by around 25, I wasn't sitting and sort of like calculating uh, okay. the the nuts and bolts of disability. I was still caught up in the emotions. Okay. I was still caught up in like um, the spiritual and the, you know, the, s the soul part of it, right? Yeah. Rather than thinking, okay, I, I need to get this together. Yeah. You know, da, 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 da. It wasn't really on my mind. And also because I was, I was that young and I was not, yeah. not with my parents. The parents and most of my family was back in Kenya, yeah. Mombasa. So it wasn't like there was anyone saying, okay, Crystal, let's pack away the tears and let's now start planning for your next five years, your yeah. next 10 years. It yeah. wasn't like that, no. How long do you, would you say that it, 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 it took you to get through the emotional, 
like soul battle yeah. that you're talking about? I mean, how long did you cry for? Was it months? Was it years? Was it yo? And is it, is, and is it on and off and or you know or, or is it like a heartbreak when you hear a specific song and mm-hmm. you're like oh my goodness mm-hmm. or is it like trying to take in everything that you could see at the time yeah it was everything now yeah. you're getting emotional thinking about oh, it oh i'm sorry but um <laughs> yeah. losing a disability yeah in the middle of your life i mean losing a, an ability sorry yeah. in the middle of your life it's like experiencing death death of a loved one yeah. right this, this is something that when you think about it this is something that um i wake up with all the time since i was born i wake up and i'm with it um i it it guides me throughout my life throughout my days um it gives me opportunity to go here experience that it's something that is with me similar to like a loved one similar right. to like a parent a spouse a child right. that you're always with and you feel completely at like you know one with unified with yeah. and experiencing and a time where someone says you're going to lose that thing eventually soon you'll lose it so yeah. be prepared yeah you can't prepare to lose your mom you can't yeah. be prepared to lose your daughter uh, you know your spouse it's, yeah. it's nothing that you can do to really prepare and so um it's an on and off even till today there are still moments where i feel oh, man I, if i had this i could have been here i could have been able to do that right. i could see what i look like now at this age right. um i could see my my nephew you know things like this yeah. um so it's it's a it's a constant for sure but yeah. then i am able to catch it quicker now with a bit more awareness and a okay. bit more you know work internal work and things um therapy and so it's not as you know before i used to sit on a bus and just be like bawling like right, right. for no reason and the right. person sitting next to me is like oh she want tissue <laughs> <laughs> so right. awkward for for everyone around me yeah. but now i am able to at least you know contain I, yeah. I i i wait till i get home and then i cry and then oh, okay <laughs> okay i see so i mean as as you you know get your diagnosis you're battling it so how long does it take you to begin to have rational thought around what your life um potentially could look like moving forward um so in the uk they have um rehabilitation services and so when i was given the diagnosis and i was told okay this is inevitable it will happen um they then gave me the opportunity to sign up to different um uh, classes uh to go for different types of trainings it's called o&m mm-hmm. or in- orientation and mobility it's mm-hmm. called so that i can start learning okay ha- i'm about to go blind how do i now cook how do i read different coins mm-hmm. identify different notes mm-hmm. um how do i cross the street safely um you know different uh, tips and tricks and hacks mm-hmm. on how to then live with your disability once you know you're fully in it so i was able to to get that kind of um support yeah. before i lost all of my eyesight or yeah. or most of it anyway yeah. so it made it a little bit easier yeah mm. so and at this point as well is it like do you have group counseling sessions where you're also hearing other people talk about them the experiences i evaded i evaded them imagine in true kenyan style like you like, you're, you're, you're we don't do this see thing that on your own. yeah counseling counseling therapy Mm-mm-mm. that's not for me that's what i used to wow. think wow okay yeah unhealthy thing i don't know if that's time. like brave or i mean looking back now do you think that was the right decision um was it the right decision i don't know i probably could have um indulged in and and gone for those for like those, a session or two yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to yeah. get some initial support and the reason why i didn't go is because i was like you guys don't know my god you know you people in england you serve <laughs> different master but me my god right. tomorrow morning i'm going to have my eyesight back right next saturday right. i'll have it back you know so i used to wake up with that much belief that much faith and i thought that um going for these counseling sessions would mean me giving up on myself and giving and, up and on, on your god. faith yeah yeah and every week as every saturday is coming by and the vision is not coming back i mean are you losing faith in in god no i'm not i'm just i'm still like yo, you're still waiting no, for the I'm miracle i'm still waiting i'm still yeah. waiting i yeah. waited and waited and being long suffering you know it says yeah. in the bible you know all these things that you know we're taught in in, in our different religions so yeah. i was not letting up i was like no god it's only when i came back from the uk uh there's a time i was at home in mbasa mm-hmm. uh eyesight had declined you know tremendously maybe like mm-hmm. 80% of it was gone by that mm-hmm. time and i was sat at home i had no prospects i was like okay what do i do when i'm back at home um no one's really hiring me don't really know what to do i studied a, a degree that is very visual you know mm-hmm. film and theater mm-hmm. what now god 
and I was crying in bed and it was rainy season. It was like May, that's sort of like May, June, July season, mm -hmm. rainy season. And the more I cried, the more it rained. Like the harder I cried, I felt the more it, rain, it was raining outside. Mm -hmm. And so I went to bed that night and then I was like, I mean, I remember this very vivid dream whereby there was a big light in front of me and, yeah. and I was sat opposite it and it was holding my cheeks and it said, be still. So I woke up in the morning and I went to my mom and said, what does this mean, be still? What do you think it means? And we flipped through the Bible and it said, Psalms 4610, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. I've been waiting on you, God, though. Yeah. I've been waiting. <laughs> like, what do you mean, be still? Yeah. I've been still. Yeah. But then from there, I pivoted my thinking. Mm -hmm. I decided that if I can't change my circumstance, I'll change the way I think about it. Okay. And I was like, okay, so what can I do? What can I learn? What exactly do you want me to do with this disability? Okay. That's, that is, I, I mean, I, first of all, I've, I've, I've watched the video where you talk about yeah. um, the Be Still Gem. And I think, if, I don't know if, um, if in the video, the way they edited it, there's actually like a really cool white light that, that they oh, use on it. So it's, it's a really cool edit. Um, but um, I guess I, I want to ask a, a little bit about the f any any financial implications when you come back um from from the uk and now you're not on nhs anymore Correct, the medication is yeah. not free yeah. or any medical um 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 anything regarding medical services you require isn't yeah. free so what's that process like when you come back to kenya like you're saying um nobody's hiring you at that particular point in time so what are you thinking in terms of yeah how you're gonna make money mm -hmm. and yeah how you're gonna live um so I wasn't an NHF, NHIF, yeah. sorry, until sorry. Yeah. very recently, actually. Yeah. Um, maybe like five years ago is when I came on to NHIF. So when I came back, I was not on NHIF. Okay. Um, like you said, everything was being paid out of pocket. Yeah. It made, the consequence of that was that I was going for less checkups because mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't afford it. My parents mm -hmm. couldn't really afford it either. It was mm -hmm. very expensive. Eye health is extremely expensive. H how, how much would a checkup cost? Um... A consultation would be like 5,000 shillings mm -hmm. and then they would give you, because glaucoma requires you to have eye drops per month mm -hmm. and eye drops expire after 30 days. So mm -hmm. you have to renew, mm -hmm. uh, you have to get new drops all the time. And I was on three drops. So in a month I would be spending, including consultation, maybe like 11 or 12,000 mm -hmm. anytime I, I, I was going for a checkup. Yeah. I knew that I would need to leave there with about, I mean, leave 12, about 12,000 shillings at that hospital. Yeah. So... I was going for less checkups, which of course was not a good idea, yeah. but financially couldn't afford it. Yeah. And um, then they would tell me, oh, we could try this procedure, that procedure. I was like, no, nah, I can't afford it. I yeah. can't afford it. So maybe there were moments that they could have intervened yeah. and done something, not to, not to reverse it, yeah. but maybe slow it down, maybe to stop it, reduce the pressure perhaps. But because of finances, um, it was much more difficult. But being on insurance now as a senator, yeah. I could go anytime. I feel, I'm just like, ooh, willing. Hey, doc, what's up? Good, good, check I'm out. back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, right. it was it was not the same. So yeah. that's the impact I had. And then um, for money, I was teaching voice lessons. Okay. Um, in Mombasa, like school kids. I used to. I, what was that website called? OLX. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, what's so, now transitioned to? Is it Gigi? Yeah. 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 So I, I posted a little uh, ad there that I'm a, I'm a vocal coach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I did a profile. People would call me and uh, come over to my house. We used to go to the roof of my parents' house. Yeah. Climb up the stairs, go to the roof, and then I would um, teach vocal classes there. Yeah. Um, another thing I used to do was make hummus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, put it in a jar, sell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> my first clients, of course, were my my siblings and right. my parents. But right. yeah, um, that was another way that I was making less, just like little small monies here and there. Yeah. And then. Once I started doing my blind girl manenos, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, peanuts though, off yeah. of online. Peanuts, peanuts. Because I was like, I didn't really. How, how much are peanuts? Peanuts are like 150, 200, yeah. 500. Is that like thousand this. or shillings? No, shillings. Oh, okay, bro. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thousand, 500, no, I'm like, you, you know, you never I know wish. what, you never know what people's, um, you know, perceptions peanuts. or context are. Yeah, you, someone's peanuts may be someone else's. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, so All right. those were some of the, the small ways I was I was saving. Okay. I have an interesting question for you. Did you do you think that your parents' perceptions, your parents not well, not perceptions, your parents' expectations of you changed after your um, diagnosis, and especially when it started getting very aggressive? Do you feel like their expectations of you in terms of being a, you know, we you know how society perceives a functioning adult of yeah, you yeah, have your yeah. own house, pay your own bills. Yeah. Do you feel like their perceptions changed? 
for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, they were definite. Their their grip loosened. Yeah. Uh, in terms of okay, you're now 18. You're now 20. You're now 22. Yeah. You know. Uh, what are you doing with your life? Definitely, I didn't have those types of, of, of conversations as much as maybe my other siblings might have had. Mm-hmm. Um, they were supportive in what I wanted to do if I... Because, I mean, disability is hard, yo. It's yeah. not, there's no way that you can really advise someone the best way to do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, the best way to sort of maneuver through it. So, And they didn't know either. Nobody in my family has a disability, so there's no experience there. So what they just did was give me space. Um, supported me, believed in me, whatever it is I wanted to do, whether I wanted to now become an event, like a small events planner for the local Sunday school at my church. Yes, what do you need from us? What do you want us to do? You want us to buy you serviettes? Uh-huh, paper cups? What right. else? You know, right. they were very supportive in that way. Yeah. Because I guess they knew that I have no other choice at the moment, no other avenue to, to really pursue because not just of going through disability, but also how society perceives disability. Yeah. It's not like they're very open. Yeah. I tried to get into media when I came back with my BBC experience. Uh, yeah, you I was like, like, you guys, are, you all know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. Guys Did that like, not mm-hmm. count, for, count for much? No. Because wow. my CV... Yeah. Do you think now, if you were coming back now, do you think it would have, you would have been able to make that transition now as opposed to a couple of years ago? Probably. With what I have, yeah, with what with I know ex- now. Yeah, with what you know and now. And how I handle you... myself now. Yeah. And the hacks that I use to get by my ES. It, yeah. it would have been easier. And I have more confidence now as well. Yeah. Um, in myself, in my skin, in my disability. So, at the time though, they were like, mm, we're, not sh- we're, not, we're not too sure. Like, mm-hmm. So, I was like, Pff. I decided to use my film and theater degree, put it into use. And now start the vlogs and start maybe uh, working with, with in the in NGO, CSO, like space. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I'm curious. Did you feel, did you feel, um, what's the word? Um, or, or looking back, what do you think would have been the best way to uh, motivate you or to get you to get to where you are now? Do you feel like the journey that you took was long enough or could it have been shortened in any way? I mean, to the point where now, yes, like you're um, nominated as senator, you're working with multiple NGOs. Do you feel like that journey could have been made shorter by different things that people could have done for you? Absolutely. Yeah. I think representation, (laughs) seeing someone that is in your situation doing fantastic things would have helped. Because when I looked on TV, I didn't see anchors with disabilities. I didn't see actors with disabilities. I didn't see business people with disabilities. Um, you know, I didn't see leaders in, with disabilities. And yeah. so it wasn't something that I thought, oh, okay, life is going to be okay because I have this blueprint. I can look at so-and-so's life and sort of like follow and sort of be a, uh, uh, they can be a mentor for me yeah. type of thing, you know? Yeah. So there was none of that at all. I didn't see anybody like me or anybody sort of like treading this path. Uh, of being young, black, and, you know, into the arts, having a visual disability. You know, yeah. they say, or other reports show, that people are more afraid of going blind than they are of death. Yeah. You know, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard people say, like, oh, my gosh, I'd rather die than <laughs> I mean, be blind. Things like that. Yeah. So it was very difficult. And yeah. um, at some point, I did rather, you know, die as well. But I think if I was able to see more people... Um, if I had a Whoopi Goldberg in Kenya, yeah. who, she has glaucoma as well. Yeah. If I had a Bono who's from U2, he has glaucoma. Yeah. If I had a Judy Dench from the Bond movies in Kenya, she has glaucoma. If they were local, yeah. on TV, on radio, in yeah. the community, I'd be like, oh my God, it's possible. Yeah. Mm. Okay, fair enough. So what is it like the day that you wake up and like, sorry, what's it like the day that you wake up and you're now completely, completely blind? You, can't, you cannot see at all. You've lost your vision completely. And a question on that, and not out of insensitivity, but curiosity, mm. do you think it would have been easier to just go straight to that point? Or was the slow um, depreciation of your vision a better sort of, you know, journey sort of to take? Right. I think for me, it was probably better that way. Yeah. Um, because at least I have memories. Mm-hmm. I, I have reference points. I have things that I can smile about even when I'm sitting amongst many people and I feel alone because it's dark in my eyes. I can still sort of like, oh, remember mm. um, and think of this and think of that. Mm. So it does still give me joy in that way. But yeah. um, at least I had half of my life with, with vision and now without. Yeah. So 
there's that and um the time there wasn't i can't really remember a time where i couldn't see it was like i said like you say it's very gradual yeah. so um but what does it feel like to wake up and open your eyes and still see think that it's dark yeah I don't really think about it that much nowadays. Yeah. I just get on with I just get on with shit. Yeah. It. Sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just get on with it. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, I don't sit and think, oh, I can't see, or oh, only when I drop something and I have to get on my hands and knees to find the coin, oh, right, or, right, to right, find right. the earring. That's when I'm like, man, this disability, man. Yeah. Take, it's cute taking me five extra minutes to get ready in the morning because I can't see. Yeah. But um, other than that, if I don't, if I don't encounter a barrier. I yeah. don't draw my disability. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So in your money journey, we were at the place where you are now um, offering music classes. You are yes, making, um, hummus. making hummus and selling making some ads. Hummus, some yeah. <laughs> when do you, when do you sort of, um, when's the next big thing that happens in your money, um, in your money journey from there? Um, I get a gig mm -hmm. with, Gosh, I don't know if I tell this story. But I, I get a gig with uh, a British NGO mm -hmm. because they have a project in Mombasa that they're doing. And they, it's a, like a one year or is it one and a half year project. And they want someone to sort of like document the project. Yeah. So who am I? Yeah. I'm like, yes, I'll apply. Applied, got it. Um, because at this point in time, how much of a vision do you have At this left? point... Um, if you had to give us like a percentage, whatever, a that, percentage, whatever that would mean. Maybe about 20. Okay. Yeah, 20% of my vision. So can't see far. Um, night vision is completely short. Yeah. Um, very blurry, but with enough light, like daytime and then with lamp, if I'm studying on a table mm -hmm. with a lamp, I, I can, you know, bring something close to my face and sort of make it out. Mm -hmm. But it's still, and also I'm not using a white cane okay. uh, full time by then. Okay. Okay. So that's, that was the scene. So I apply, I get it. I guess they see BBC. They see I was studying in the UK. They're British as well. So yeah. there's a connect there. Higher. Now we go to the field. And then I'm actually required to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Masking? Masking now. Uh -huh. Anyway, so yeah. I'm there with my camera because, you know, I've studied, I studied the anatomy of film. Is do in you my not head. have someone helping you? Bro, let me tell you the story. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm there with my camera because yeah. I know the technical, all the info is education is in my mind. Yeah. But now the execution is is the part that I'm struggling with. Yeah. So I'm sitting, you know, it's like a workshop type thing. The first thing is like they bring stakeholders into a workshop. Right. They're teaching them, training them on on waste management. That's what it was about. I'm in the corner, tripod, setup, camera, you know, sort of like what, what's happening in here. I am pretending to film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do next, yeah. but my first plan was yeah. just, just hit press the button and pretend and just do the thing, you know, touch, touch. So you just like move, just moving the yeah, camera. Yeah, 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 around. correct. You know, now change my position, change my angle, getting these people on this side of the right. room, then that side, then the presenter, higher. When I get home, Crystal, you don't have footage. I mean, you have footage, but it's just random. You've not, oh, it's, it's just, not focused. Yeah. It's not, uh, the, you've not uh, set your, your shot, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I get home. I call a guy. You know, you have to have a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I call, like, I'm like, yo, I, his name was Kip. Yo, Kip, I say, I'm going to pay you X amount of money yeah. to come and shadow and, and do this work, you know? Yeah. Uh, my name will be at the front, but you're the one who's done the work. Yeah. So the next day, day two of, of the thing, I bring Kip. And I'm like, yeah, this is, um, this is my or assistant. Whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because I, I realized on day one that, you know, lots of people, you yeah. know, it's better to have two cameras, da, da, da. So I'm still pretending on one camera, but Kip is actually <laughs> <laughs> doing the work on his camera. Wow. Then he edits at home. We yeah. sit in my place. I make sure that he's watered and fed for however many hours we need to edit. He edits it. Na, 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 na. I present it. I give my invoice. <sighs> Crisis averted. <laughs> wow. That's, I, you know, that's, that is some serious balls. I don't, <laughs> the way that I'm wired, I don't think I could do something like that. Because I told them, listen, yeah. if I want to do this work, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a nine to five. I can't be in this office. I need to do. I need to be at home. My environment. You know, right, I'm right, creative. Right, right. Did all that. Okay. Pulled all that. Did they like? Did they like the the? Oh the yeah, work the end, end product. The they loved yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They the end product. Yeah, but so I did yeah. not do that again. Yeah. It was way too stressful. Yeah. Way too stressful. Just to try and figure out, like, so so moving forward, then what do you do? You know, in terms of your career and like looking for work and and making making money work for you, so to speak. 
So I decide to, of course, well, not decide. I don't know if it's by choice yeah. or just because of rejection. I uh, Now I'm in the entrepreneurial space. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm just doing this ma- on my own. Yeah. Um, I used to uh, save money, go on the night bus to Nairobi, mm-hmm. and then look for different gigs, um, places uh, at Carnival, at, uh, what was that place called on Sheromo Road? I forgot. It's Galileo Lounge. Mm-hmm. I don't know where. Anywhere um, that there is music or art yeah. and culture so that I could hopefully bump into... S- to people yeah. who are of the same mind and um, did that back and forth for quite a long time. Uh, I was able to meet, you know, the Eric Wainainas, um, Victor Say and all, right. just bumping into, but nothing was really sticking. And then I decided to go on LinkedIn for the first time. I mm-hmm. was like, okay, what's this LinkedIn thing? Let mm-hmm. me go and try it. I, I searched, you know, film, theater, drama, music, those kinds of keywords. Yeah. Found a lady called Dorothy Getuba Pala who was a uh, owner of a place called Spielworks Media yeah. here in Nairobi, in uh, Kileleshwa. And I messaged her. I was like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. I give her like a brief sort of like what I've been up to. And um, the funniest part and the, the biggest blessing was that she actually replied. As yeah. big as she was, well, I, I, for me, that, yeah, in I Mombasa, mean, a, everyone in Nairobi is huge, right? Yeah. As big as she was with her company, na, 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 um, producing all these different uh, TV dramas, she replied and she was like, oh, Hi, Crystal, da 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 The last sentence she wrote was, how can I help you? She didn't go like, sorry, yeah. you know, or try this other avenue. She didn't yeah. like dismiss me. She was yeah. like, how can I help? So from there, fast forward, she brought me, to, I, I came to Nairobi, and then she brought me to her, um, her production company, like where they were based. And then um, she was like, oh, uh, I've got this guy who's a, mus- he's a, he's a uh, key- keyboardist or yeah. um, pianist, yeah. And uh, you can maybe link up with him, write a song. And then if you write a song, if you manage, I'll, you know, get my guys together to like shoot you a very simple music video here on, on our campus. And, you know, we'll put it online and see what happens. And then from there, um, she introduced me to, or rather she showed my videos, my Blind Girl Manenos and my music video to Carla Mutoko. I went to Carla Mutoko. Mutoko then uh, led to Jeff Koinange. Jeff Koinange led to, led to, led to, led to. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's right. how I started to like build, build a, a name for myself and visibility for my work. Right. Okay. That's, um, yeah, I guess what they call serendipity, is it? Yeah. Or and, just and, things. And just, yeah. you know, blind faith. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> literally and, <laughs> <laughs> literally and, 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 and figuratively. Um, yeah. A question about um, what, what money means to you right now, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like you made reference earlier, you said, yeah, many people would say I'd rather I'd rather die than, than go blind. And I think about it now and I'm like, actually, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I do want to see the things that I spend my money on. And I think that obviously has an implication on what money means to me, you know. Um, so I'm curious, what are the things that matter to you now in terms of what money can do for you and where money is concerned? I mean, do you do you want to have um, and I'm sorry if it sounds like, sounds like an ignorant question, but do you want to have a lot of money mm. um, to be able to have like a huge house and, you know, mm-hmm. um, buy a Lamborghini and all of these things? Or did your your um, your perceptions and your dreams and your ideas shift a little bit once, once yeah. you lost your vision? Definitely shifted. Yeah. Huge. I think that was actually part of the lesson that I was supposed to learn yeah. um, from losing my eyesight is what do you focus on? What do you put a lens on in your life? What is really important is the house, the Lamborghini, um, the material things. Are they more important than, you know, learning character, um, learning uh, or, or improving your personality, uh, you know, emotional he- health and well-being, things like that? So I lost, I lost an appetite for physical things, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, right now I hate shopping. I actually, that's one of the things that I actually, I feel naskeki soon ziniki here into any kind of shopping mall. I'm yeah. just like, this is, I just want to go home. Yeah. Um, I don't like shopping. Um, I spend, or rather I save a lot more, like a lot more. I live way below, way be, below my means. Way, way, way. I think my monthly sort of expenditure is including rent. Yeah. It's like 50k. Wow. Yeah. And that's me living, like, I have everything I need. I'm yeah. not struggling at all. And yeah. also, I mean, I'm single. I have no children. So yeah. that's a factor. But um, I save a lot more. I can just take my paycheck or whatever, whatever I earn from a gig or whatever. And I just say, okay, 80%, I'm putting in my savings. And I won't even blink an eye. I'm just like, because mm. I, I, I live simply. 
I still live simply. Mm. And I think that is absolutely connected to my eyes. Yeah. Because many people who have eyesight are tempted through this. Yeah. Yeah, they feel envy through this. Yeah. And with this being gone, that mm. cuts off half of my stresses, half of my like mental um, space and, 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 and that kind of thing. So I, I save a lot more. I spend a lot less. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really moved by what is hot, what is not. Yeah. I, if, I, if I could still drive my little Toyota IST, which I actually still have in, my, in, my, <laughs> in the car park, yeah. I will drive it. The first time I came to Senate, I was still driving my small KBS. It was a KBS right. Toyota IST. Right. Tiny. And f- colleague senators were like, Asige, you're going to have to upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, but why? Is that because of you? Do you feel weird and awkward and uncomfortable? Or is it me? Because I'm, I'm cool in this car. I don't, I, I'm fine. It's actually you and your perceptions yeah. that are skewing what you think an MP should look like, yeah. drive in, live in, uh, travel to. Yeah. So there's that. And then also I spend more money on experiences than things. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I enjoy going out and spending time with friends, going for walks, like outdoor things, yeah. things that don't require a lot of money. And people think, oh, Christmas is cheap. And I'm like, no, it's because the experience is worth more. It's more valuable than us going on some like lavish um, Vipingo Ridge type of, um, I don't know, party, for example, you right. know, ch- chopping, chopping money. Right. I'm, not, I'm not really interested in that. So right. I'm not moved by that. I'm not interested in that. And it's a bit weird at times because even me, I'm like, hey, Crystal, I mean, how cheap can you spend yeah. some money? Just <laughs> spend some money. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really, I just regular clothes, yeah. regular hair, regular life, you know nails are just regular um but it helps yeah maybe it's detrimental detrimental maybe later when i'm 60 70 i'll be like man i should have i should have treated myself a little bit more splurged a bit more but that it's it's a combination of how i was brought up and then now my disability put together yeah Okay, I have a question on that. Um, I, I and I wonder again, not from insensitiv- insensitivity. I would say that no a couple worries. of times, but from curiosity. Yeah. Um, I feel like, so like like um, a couple of weeks ago, I had the CEO, former CEO of the NSC here, and he was talking about the pressures of 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 his office and you know having to drive a specific car um because, or wear you know a specific suit or look a specific style because of his position right and so i wonder do you think because you i guess had the privilege of having a life like you said a life with vision and one without mm. do you feel like if you had made the same decisions you're making now when you had vision do you think you would have been judged the same way that you are now where i feel like mm. You know, like if you tell me now, yes, yeah, I don't care about the yes. ISD. Good I don't question. care about. Mm. I don't care about my clothes. I don't care about that. And I spend fifty thousand shillings a month. Be, you know, I'll look and I'll be like, okay, cool. Um, if, if yeah, I guess you've got my question there. Like yeah. before, would you have been given the same? I don't want to call it grace because it, it really isn't even grace because it's nobody else's business. Mm. But yeah, I think people would have judged me l- more. Yeah. If I were like this with eyesight, yeah, I think they would definitely come harder, down harder on me. Like, oh, you're just you're a, you're a grouch, you're a Scrooge, you you know why you ho- why are you hoarding money, or yeah. spend it. Like, let's go out. Sometimes they friends and and people around me do say that to me, but not as often at yeah. all as as I see them saying to other people. Yeah, like let's just spend money. What's 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 twenty k? It's just one night. Let's have fun. They yeah. don't really say that to me. I think because they're like, hmm. This, this this babe, she has enough troubles. Let's not let's not stress her out. <laughs> Which is good. It's a bit of a cloak, actually. It's actually a bit of a I'm just right. thank goodness uh, right. for right. protection right. from peer pressures and things like that. Right. But certainly I don't think if I had my eyesight there would be pressure externally and also internal pressure. Like I yeah. need to keep up. Um, I'm now in Nairobi, I'm now an MP, you know, if that, that was if if I had my eyesight. What are other MPs yeah. wearing, yeah. doing, going, posting? It would definitely weigh on me, but I um I'm actually glad. It's quite a blessing, actually. I, I just thought about that. Thanks. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So so now I guess like sort of you know looking forward because I'm assuming I, I'm not even sure how much how much do senators make. I'm sure it's it's in the it's um, somewhere. Uh, on average, MPs make. It's five hundred. It's not five hundred or six hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. About that. Yeah. So you are the same. Yeah, level. and also I have a tax exemption because of my my my, my I'm a right. PWD. Right. Actually. Good place to go, man. 
tax exemption for peop people with disabilities um, threshold is 150,000. Right. So anything, anything I earn and anything ab you're taxed above 150,000. Correct, 000. yeah. So okay. from 151,000 I am when you I'm get taxed, that. correct. Okay. Uh, I'm taxed uh, as everybody else is. Right. But um, that 150,000 I remember the yeah. first time I told colleague I told uh, Senator Sifuna that. He's like, "Ah, Kumbu, you make more money than me. I'm a deputy <laughs> <laughs> leader in this place. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sorry, bro. Yeah. Go look for his disability. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so, well, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what we make. I mean, okay. So now I have to ask you because you, send, you, spend, so, you, you spend so little of your money. So what do you do with your money? Like so where, even if you're saying save it, like where are you putting it? And I, what is it for? I have most of my money in a high yield um, interest account yeah. at my bank. And that's for a year. I can't touch it until after that. Uh, but it's at 14.5%. 14 14 yeah. That's, um, that's, what I'll, that's what I'm making interest on. Yeah. I also have um, a property that I've been able to buy out in Kilifi. Mm -hmm. So building and, and, and working on that is what I'm doing with my money. Um, I, what else do I like doing with my money? I still spend money um, traveling. Mm -hmm. I, I do enjoy traveling, like I said, experiences. So now, for example, if there is a, a some sort of a Senate trip, I need to go on duty, I will take like an extra day or two then in said place right. because I can afford it. Um, but also I spend money on my team, uh, my staff, my, my parents. I'm taking care of the medicals and the NHIF and things like that, medication, whatever it is that they need. And... I also make money as well because we have a little um, a flat in uh, Mombasa. Mm -hmm. That's somewhere that I also uh, make money from rent. Mm -hmm. And I use, at the beginning before, because I had that flat before I got into parliament. Mm -hmm. So I was using the rent from that tenant to now pay installments on, mm -hmm. on that piece of land in, mm -hmm. uh, Ki, no, Kilifi, in, uh, yeah, in Kilifi. Yeah. And then I'm trying to buy a house now. So I'm spending, I guess, more on things that are sustainable more long lasting mm -hmm. i suppose um rather than you know fleeting items and 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 experiences and right things. yeah okay i'm being chased here but i have i have a few things i still i still i have to i, I have How to dare ask you chase yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have to ask right um <laughs> first thing and this again not insensitivity curiosity I want to, I want to and you know I'm you emphasizing anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm emphasizing it also for my 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 people on Twitter um <laughs> who sometimes like me sometimes they don't <laughs> But my question that, is yeah. yeah so tell me you know they they talk about um when you lose um a sensory um when you lose you know the senses yeah. the others are enhanced yeah, yeah. is that is that a myth is it true and what's that process actually like if it is true it is true, but not in like a magical woo-woo kind of way. Like superhero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not like Batman. Mm -mm. Mm. It's just more like if you go to the gym yeah. and your trainer or yourself, you decide for this next few weeks, I'm going to work on my legs. Yeah. Of course, your legs are going to get stronger, right? Yeah. Today, I'm going to work on my abs. Yeah. Uh, this, this month, I'm going to work on X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's what it's like. Okay. So it's just because I have lost my eyesight, it means that my ears are working harder, my sense of touch is working harder, my um, uh, my sort of like um, spatial awareness is also working harder. So that's the only reason why, not because there's some sort of magical like switch that mm -hmm, yeah. no one went like choo like yeah you're now better at hearing. Yeah, it's only because of practice, and yeah. practice is only came out of uh, necessity. Yeah, because now I use my ears and my hands to see. Yeah, when I walk around somewhere, you'll see, when I walked in here, around. I was yeah. looking for the chair, touching it, trying to feel. You know, it's very nice material, by the way. Yeah, darling. This is um, <laughs> shiko, shiko it's only high quality and financially <laughs> correct, guys. Yeah, right? we're financially yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, so things like that, and and my hearing also, I used to see. Um, so when I'm in loud spaces, I literally cannot see. Yeah. Uh, that's why I don't enjoy going to clubs often, um, or being out in environments that are extremely loud, similar to your nephew, mm -hmm, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But mine is for a little bit of a different reason because these are my, these are my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why. Yeah. But it, I mean, it helps. Uh, nowadays I... I do a bit more eavesdropping. Yeah. Not on purpose, but yeah. you know, I'm just sitting in you a cafe somewhere. Hear, yeah. yeah, just 
just like <laughs> I hear Jokey saying so and so to jo- Johnny and uh, right. Yeah. So um it's interesting and uh just an experience that's different but not because of anything else apart from adapting, being agile, yeah. being able to say like okay, cool, can't do this in one way, let me look for another way to do it. Okay. My final question, hopefully the final question. Um, hopefully. I mean, not hopefully, I'm joking. I'm kidding. I can, um, I can be here for ages. I, it's just that, she, you know, she goes, yeah. She goes. Bo- it's bothering she us. A, she goes bossy. Yeah. Um, she has a cute voice, but. Wrap, wrap us up here quickly. Um, what does a successful, and I want to ask this sort of, you know, um, two way, right? Yeah. Um, what does a successful life um, look like for you and what does a successful life monetarily look like for you if there's a if there's a distinction between the difference between those two mm. um at all it, especially because again like we've talked about you you don't necessarily um spend money on what the average person would really like look at you don't get envious you don't get jealous um because you're not able to see those things yeah so i'm just curious what a successful life for you looks like monetarily like that right now and yeah, yeah. Um, a successful life in general uh, looks like impact. I'm a very high impact, like um, action-based human being. Yeah. I think that also comes from a disability because when I was told, you're going to lose this by this time, I had to get more uh, like urgent. There was a sense of urgency that was built inside of me. You know, a battery was put in my back. Have to get this done. Like, okay, I need to learn this, how to do this now. I need to learn how to iron my clothes, cook, clean, etc. Live basically before, you know, in quotes, the lights go out type thing. So it created a sense of urgency inside me. So I think that that's why I'm still a high impact human being. I just love having meaning and purpose in everything that I do. I don't just do things for the sake of doing them. I'm just like, okay, what's going to be the end goal here? Which makes me maybe to some people uh, like a bit, you know, um, persist, like, you know, striving for excellence like yo give us a break crystal like geez some of us don't move at the speed that you move at yeah um that kind of feeling but that's the only reason it's just because i understand what it's like to not have time to um enjoy something fully okay. yeah because it's being taken away so success looks like impact for me okay. changing the world with what i'm doing changing people's minds actually yeah. what i'm doing and and who i am and what i am putting out into the world so that that stuff can outlive me yeah uh, it will how I make people feel and what, how I make them feel included and seen and heard and understood, I think will far outlive, you know, a salary yeah. or, um, you know, buying something nice for myself. So if that's success for me, if, if that was a clear answer, yeah. I don't know if it was. No, but, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. And success financially is just being comfortable. I am dreaming of the day when I'm sitting in that uh, <laughs> Kilifi plot. Right, yeah, just... Right. A little bungalow. I don't want to build something crazy. Yeah. A little bungalow, uh, Lamu esque, you know, style housing. A little uh, veranda outside with a pillow. Maybe a little dog. That would yeah. be dope. Um, having tea and cof- teas and coffees outside. Yeah. My little Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. That's for me financially. I'll, I'll be happy. And my parents um, being taken care of. Uh, my siblings not having, you know, too much troubles. If I can support them, absolutely I do. Yeah. And financially, having an in, having investments, of course, that are working for me. Yeah. So I don't have to keep working and worrying about money. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think I think that's it. And then also, financial inclusion is really important mm-hmm. in 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 my in my finance journey. Mm-hmm. I really want to make banks and financial institutions be more aware of how people with disability interact with money. Yeah. So I remember, this is now going back a little bit. No problem, and no problem, yeah. I remember there was a time when we were getting the new notes being yeah. printed. Yeah. And I wrote letters to CBK asking how inclusive are these notes? Mm. And, um, co- and I gave them uh, comparative studies of the UK, Australia, what they do with their notes, America, blah, blah, blah. This is how they, they have, you know, tactile little bumps. Yeah. Some of them have rounded edges on one side so that yeah. somebody knows what this is. Yeah. You know, um, very contrasting in colors as well so that someone with low vision can just put it in front of them close and, and know what this is, what this right. is. Right. So I wrote that letter. I wrote a few. And um, I remember <laughs> actually um, 
being intimidated a little bit. Yeah. I was being intimidated by people over there because they were like, you're making too much noise about this because some media had, you know, picked up on it mm, um, mm. On, on my conversation about inclusive yeah. finance. Yeah. So since then, I've been like, okay, why don't banks have ATMs that are inclusive? Right. In the UK and in, in Europe, etc., you will have like a little port where you can stick in earphones mm -hmm. and then the automatically the ATM will speak to you as a visually impaired person. Right. So you can interact with it and not have to have somebody go like, okay, come, come and yeah. perform me my pain. Right, right, right. Why as well do all of these uh, restaurants and different um, uh, places which, which give products and services uh, only have touchscreen PDQs? Right, right. Because I can't interact with it as a blind person. Right. We need as well, I push for my tattoos and public service vehicles to now move into smart payments right. so that I can only, I can just get on my M-Pesa and pay because my phone and my devices are suited to me. Yeah. I've, I've, I've put on different features yeah. that I can use them. So financial inclusion is really important. There's a case actually in court right now, a visually impaired man who was turned away by a particular bank, INM bank, because they were like, oh, you can't open an account with us because we don't know if it will be safe for you to own your own account. Right. He's a He's an adult. He's actually a lawyer himself. Yeah. So he took them to court because of the discrimination at, yeah. at a different bank. So yeah. because he was saying, uh, for the paperwork to open an account, can you give me an option to, to put right. my fingerprint? fingerprint as opposed to. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of signing, they were like, oh, we don't have a policy around that. You need to get somebody to um, give up your rights to, so that they can take care of your account. He's like, yeah. no, but finances are very personal. Yeah. And they wouldn't have done it to anybody else. Yeah. So things like that, um, yeah. society where they are putting barriers in front of you, where there shouldn't be any in terms yeah. of finance, because that is a right. That is yeah. my right, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. inclusion in finance is really important for people with disabilities to be independent, yeah. to have dignity, man. Yeah. Um, be able, I don't want to always have somebody next to me doing everything for me. Right. We should get to a place as Kenyans and as Africans whereby you're like, I'm going to give you all that you need, the infrastructure, the knowledge, the training, mm. equipment, assistive technology, so that you right. as a disabled person can live freely as possible. Right. So financial success for me also includes that. Okay. Do you have someone that you like ultimately trust beyond, I guess, whoever's your, your aides? I mean, someone who would, who actually knows how much money, for example, like you have in your account. Is that something that you require um, to know that, okay, you said your salary has been paid at the end of this month that they can tell you, yes, actually it has been paid and it's X amount and it's this. The beauty is, okay, no, I don't. First yeah. Of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So only, if he was to take off with everything only as trust, he is only now, trust like yourself, people. He, Moses, okay. you can be gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The story of, of Rosemary Odinga, yeah. who went through this thing. She had a, somebody, an aide, um, who she entrusted with her M-Pesa, her phone and yeah. her details. And she got robbed by that person. Just a few years back, you know, she also has a visual impairment. Yeah. Yeah. So since then, and it went to the news, I actually had to meet up with her and say, girl, listen, this is how I do mine. Yeah. So I'll teach you how to do it. Get a phone, get an Apple, because Apples are, you know, the most um, uh, forward in terms of yeah. technology and, and security. Do this, train yourself on this. And so I, because I've been able to get that training when I was back in England, yeah. and of course, because I'm, I'm more tech sort of um, savvy. Correct. Yeah. I, I didn't go the Braille way. I went more the tech way because I could yeah. see where the world is going. Yeah. So because of that, I decided to empower myself by learning how to do my own emails, do my own finances, do my own investments, check on my own... I was going to say shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, that, I, okay. I, I, I trust myself. Okay. I have a lot more questions and hopefully we'll have you back on again. Anytime. Chico's, I'm now, I'm now, you know, Chico, anytime. succumbing to Chico's pressure. But my final question is... You see, is, if you couldn't see, you wouldn't even <laughs> care. You see, I'm That's just true. I'm living You're life just, like it's yeah. golden. I'm just like, yeah, yeah whatever. But Chico's giving you the eyes. Nah, she's giving me the eyes. <laughs> writing all sorts of nasty messages on her, on her phone. <laughs> Um, threatening me, you know. Anyway, no, my la yeah, my last, my last, last question for today because we definitely we have to have her back. We have to have her back. Um, last question um, is, what one thing that I am taking for granted, uh, me as a person who has vision that I'm not even that I'm not even aware of that I'm taking for granted. That you're not aware of that. You're yeah, taking that for I'm granted. like I don't even know that I'm taking it for granted, but you know for sure because of your experience that I am. If you have an you're, answer to that You're question. taking for granted being seen. Yeah. Yeah, you're taking for granted being seen, being um, considered. You're taking for granted being included. 
even just in small things, um, when I was going through my disability and it was first happening, people, my friends disappeared. They were like, oh, she's not as fun as she used to be. She doesn't go out as much. She doesn't, she's a bit of a burden. We have to take care of her. We have to like hold her, uh, her arm, pick her up, drop her off, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. And so I was less, I became less valuable, I guess, in society. Yeah. But you, I think as a non-disabled person, take that for granted. Being seen, being um, uh, understood, being... Um, being valued, yeah, without having to fight twice as hard to get half as far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will Do you think that? <sighs> what do you think you take for granted? It's not me who's extending this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very interested though. Sorry, she caught this one more minute. She it's, not me. It's, like, it's, it's not me. Um, Comment you, section. Tell, yeah. she, tell uh, Chico we man. love her for these extra minutes. Yeah, I mean, I... I mean, I, I, I can see what you're saying. You know, I mean, I, in, in as far as I can understand you and understand the words that you're saying, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of those things that you probably have to... You don't know until you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I can hear what you're saying. Like, I can. And, I, and you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, those are awful friends. Yeah, I wouldn't do the same for, you know, if 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 that happened, you know. Mm -hmm. But I honestly don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, I, I, the only person that, like I've, I've mentioned, the only person that I know who has a disability is my nephew. And, of course, he's, he's always had it. He's I've covered. always been the same mm -hmm. with him as he always have been. But mm -hmm. I don't know if... I would have been one of those friends and been like, oh, yeah. And I don't even know if I would have done it consciously, you know? Yeah. So, All the time, it's not conscious. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't know, but I will reflect on it. And when you're, when you're here next, because um, we have to finish this conversation, then try this. we'll go we'll home. It. Yeah. Try and do a, a disability simulation. Put a blindfold on. Yeah. And then just try and like live and interact uh, just at home in your compound. In the just like with, just mm -hmm. like put something on my eyes mm -hmm. and see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then see how often you get left out of, oh, let's go for lunch. 20, 20 down to the corner. Right. See how much you get left out yeah. of conversation or because you're not really reacting and looking at people in their eyes. Yeah. They, they, a lot of times when you look at someone in the eye, you yeah. know that you're talking and yeah. you relate more. But if I can't look in you in the eyes, I am sort of like psh, glossed yeah. over. Try. I'll let you know how that goes the next time that you're here. <laughs> okay, that was. I, I really, really enjoyed that conversation. Thank you. So I've did learned, I. Yeah, really like fun. I've learned quite a bit. I was a bit apprehensive. I was like, what am I going to say? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Thank it was you. good. Thank you. Very Okay. Awesome. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Financially Incorrect. Thank you.